Hi, I'm Frances Aldana. Um, I have met many of you um, many times before. Uh, and you all probably know that um, Huntington's disease is a genetic disease. Uh, when I married the father of my children, I had no idea what I was in for. So uh, we immediately went into having children. So just to get to the bottom of where this ended, I had um, all my children, three children, within a seven year period. They were the most wonderful years a mother could have, the most wonderful gift. And Huntington's disease took all of them away from me within seven years. These are my children. My children were fighters. And we said goodbye to Michael two months ago. I um, have a picture here of um, my very first CIRM meeting, which was exactly seven years ago. I, we had so much hope. When their father died, that was devastating, because he died in 89. We had no idea how to treat Huntington's. We, knew, we, had, we didn't know how to test. We had nothing. We didn't have the internet. So it was a, a nightmare for us. And the worst nightmare for me was knowing that my children may be having this very same disease. So I tried to make life as wonderful as I could for my children, involve them in activities, tried to learn all I could about Huntington's, went to the UCI library, checked out volumes of books, nothing on Huntington's, maybe a paragraph. So we try to pretend it wasn't going to happen. And my children would ask me, Mom, are we going to have Dad's disease? And I would tell them, knowing I was lying to them, of course you're not. You look like me. You're not going to have Huntington's. So we just um, went on with life. Um, Margie was very active in musical theater. She loved that. And so um, she moved to LA and would write her own scripts and did her own student videos. And she was just such a lovable, vibrant daughter. I, I just, she was a socialite. Everything had to, she was a Disney princess. <laughs> That's what she was. Everything was possible. If you ever saw the movie Enchanted, that was her. So she convinced my youngest daughter, Marie, who was now a se uh, 17 years old and symptomatic, and I knew, but I couldn't, I didn't have the t heart to tell her, baby, I think you have Huntington's disease. There was nothing, why should I tell her? So she was in the Miss Teen Orange County Beauty pageant and did well. But I knew, I knew, even when she was, when she entered, she wouldn't be able to answer the, the Q&A questions well. And when she danced, she was like one or two beats behind everybody else. But I, you know, I just encouraged her to do what she wanted to do. Michael was the entrepreneur wanted to have his own restaurant in Manhattan one day. And went as a teenager by himself, without my permission to Paris, to study culinary arts and took French classes. And um, that little kid, I couldn't stop him. And um, I now know that was part of the juvenile onset of Huntington's disease. They're fearless. They think everything's possible. So he came back and wanted to raise money fast. So he went to Alaska and got jobs on those fishing expeditions. Um, when David, my husband, and I decided to get married, I asked him to come back because I wanted him to walk me down the aisle, and he did. And when he walked me down the aisle, he started tripping. And at a time when I should have been so happy because I'm, you know, getting married to David, who's going to be my lifelong partner, my mind is on Huntington's disease. Does my son have it? So this is where I just um, started in 2000. I just went full speed ahead to advocate for Huntington's disease and started um, the um, HDSA Orange County chapter. And by now, my children, all three of them, were pretty symptomatic. Um, so that was, and you know, they started losing friends. All they, you know, when they're well and vibrant, they got lots of friends. But when they start getting sick, 
friends go away. So looking forward to the, the Huntington's Disease Walks, the fundraisers. Looking forward to Margie's bake sale that she had every year. Looking forward to the Bolathon. That was like Christmas for them. So in 2007, when um, Ken Serban and uh, Bob Klein invited me to attend my very first uh, HD or CIRM board meeting, I, I just thought, oh my god, there's hope, there's hope. Uh, my children are going to be fine. My children are going to be cured. So here we are, Dr. Pacifici, Hans Kierstead, uh, my daughter Margie, after she spoke, and myself. Um, and she's smiling, you know. She, you, there's video of her at this talk where she's, th there's movement all over the place, and she talks about how her children just uh, are keeping their distance from her now because they don't know what's going on. So that was, um, that was December of 2007. So the fight goes on. Now uh, Marie is no longer able to walk, and since I'm still employed, I, I can't take care of her at home when, when she's, you know, she's sick and she's bedbound. So I pull her out of the, she, she goes to a care home and I put, put her in her wheelchair to go in and let students and children see what um, Huntington's is and to tell them about it and thank them for fundraising for her. Here she is, just thanking all the children for raising funds for, for Huntington's disease research. So, uh, and there, here's Michael, passing out water. He can't walk anymore, but he's smiling, and he's happy that we're doing all these things. And um, 2012, I decided, you know, I, I really have a lot of faith and hope in the work that Dr. Thompson is doing. I want to support Dr. Thompson. I want to know that not 5%, 10%, uh, 15% is going to research. I want all of it to go to research, but I also want funding to go to the clinic at, at UCI, which we started in 2005, and, uh, and have money for patients that don't have insurance, patients that want a blood test. So we started uh, HD Care at UCI in 2012, and we're all volunteers. We don't get salaries or anything, so we give 75% to Leslie Thompson to do her work on you know, induce pluripotent stem cells or anything she needs for her lab or she wants to send a postdoc to a conference or whatever, whatever she wants. It's not designated funds. She can do what she wants. And same with uh, Neil Hermanowitz. So now, you know, the, the clock is ticking. And my little baby, Marie, passed away in 2009. She was still smiling and still singing the songs that she sang as a counselor in the YMCA. But she was suffering so much. She, when she passed away, she weighed 67 pounds. Recurring sepsis, seizures, grand mal seizures, that we had to just do something different. As the doctor told me, that Mrs. Saldana talked to your daughter to ask God to take her. And that was the hardest thing I ever had to do, but I did. And she nodded, no, 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 because she was a fighter. But the next morning, and I went to see her. She smiled at me. I asked her if she loved me. She nodded yes. I said, I love you too, and she passed away. My daughter, Margie, I think went the best way. We provided a, between three families a, a private caregiver for her. And um, she went to sleep in 2014. Just went to sleep. And I was called. I didn't get to be there when she took her last breath. But she also always thought she was going to be cured. And her worst nightmare was to think that her children might inherit her disease. So we continue with the fight, you know, in their memory and in the memory of all the families that I've met, all the dads and moms and children that I've met whose loved ones have died. My son, oh my God, he was the fighter and they're even doing a study on him at the hospital because uh, he was so sick. And um, because you're young, their organs are strong, but the brain is destroying their body. And recurring sepsis, recurring pneumonia, four 
months in and out of the hospital, again, they told me, Mrs. Aldana, there's nothing we can do for him. Let's put him in a hospice. Let's put, put him in comfort care. So we did. I said, well, how long will it take? Two days, they said. No, 42 days, because his heart was strong until I finally got down on my knees and prayed and asked, God, please take my son. He's suffering the way your son died. Please take him right now. And as I looked up, the nurse said, Francis, I think this is it. And I got up, and he took his last breath. So my granddaughter now, who was little when all this started, just a little girl, four years old, passing out flyers, She's now a young lady, 19 years old, and now she's at risk. So she's willing, she's willing to join me and, and to keep on with the fight. And that would be the worst nightmare for me if, my, if, if she has Huntington's, if she tests positive, and we still have nothing. At that point, I, I don't know if I want to go on living because I got to see my mother-in-law only one time my late husband died at the age of 42. And now all my children are gone. I, I, I don't want to see my grandchildren gone. I, I have so much faith in the work that Dr. Thompson is doing, the work that Jan Holt is doing, all the work that HD researchers are doing, and they're, they're truly my angels. I have even said many times to Leslie, you know, I just, these people, they're just so nice. I just, I worked in the business world all my life <laughs> since I was 20. And this is not the way it is in the business world. And, but your, your lab technicians, your science, they're just like a different breed. I think it's because they really care. They want to really uh, heal people. In fact, nine of them actually went to Michael's bedside before he died. They went just a few days before he passed away. That's how much they care. And they've gone to the funerals and they really have become part of our families. They go to our fundraisers. So I just want to thank you all because this is, this is where hope is. It's right here, right here, and with all the work that our researchers are doing in the labs. So with that said, I just uh, want to say um, my children were fighters. That picture, I see that picture, that little girl, that, that's how I want to see my granddaughter and all future generations of families with Huntington's to look just like that. Thank you.